King of the Air 2022, the biggest dick measuring contest in kiteboarding returned for the 10th edition. And you could have been mistaken for thinking it was some sort of VR convention. And believe me, the sort of shit that went down, it basically was a virtual reality. The Red Bull King of the Air. The best kiteboarding event out there. So without further ado, let's look at the key moments in which King of the Air 2022 was won and lost. I'm Kiel, I'm 27 years old, from Holland, and I'm a professional kiteboarder. Liam Whaley, I'm 26 years old, from Spain, this is going to be my fifth King of the Year. The Liam Heel heat, this was massive. Now, neither of them ended up on the podium, but it was the most dramatic heat of the day. Heel leads the heat until the buzzer, with a late back double and a boogie double that are massive. But it comes down to the third scoring move, where Heel goes for a double loop board off, and Liam does the same. Game over. Here we go. Liam Whaley. He's this is going to be extreme. If he lands this, oh look at that. Word. I don't believe he's landed that. That has to be a 10. It wasn't quite a 10, but Liam still won the heat off the back of that move. I do think, however, that if Hill had landed his double loop board off, that would have had to have been a 10, and then the heat would have gone his way. So let's have a look at what went wrong for Hill in the critical moment. If he lands this, then I think it's game over. He should. No! Here, he is way higher than he expected to be. That causes him to rush putting the board back on, which sends him into a spin. If you go back and look at Liam's, you'll see that his board's still off throughout that second loop, whereas Heel's in a real big panic here to get it back on. On all of Heel's successful double loops in this heat, he does one big heli loop, letting the kite go behind him to slow him down. In this one, he goes for two. Look how high he is when he gets caught. There. He's got to do two heli loops to navigate his way down from here. And unfortunately on that second one, it's just too narrow and it's too above him to provide sufficient lift to bring him down softly. He didn't have his feet in the ball. Wow, that he, if he had stuck there, I would have said it was game over. Here we go, Liam Whaley. He's this is going to be extreme. If he lands this, Oh my that. word, I don't believe it. Number 10. Number, Number 10. 10. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Meanwhile, in round three, Lorenzo slays the returning king, Mark Jacobs. Here's how it happened. Mark Jacobs, current champion, is up against him. Look at the height of this move. It's outrageous. That is a huge boogie loop, back roll, or back roll mega loop there with probably about four rotations. Right, so from the get-go, Lorenzo's going seriously big. How's he doing it? 24 metre lines has something to do with this. Mark's on 22 metres, an extra two metres, which is 9%. Lorenzo also takes off slightly differently. Look at this. Lorenzo's kite is not at 12 there. He's left the water, but it's still at about 11.30. He then completes the rest of his centre 12 whilst he's already in the air. This is new, and it's something that only these young emerging kids do, and I'm pretty sure it's getting them higher. The other thing that Lorenzo is just the master of, and he's probably better than anyone else at the moment at it, is heli loops. He managed to, look at this boogie S from Mark, yeah? Pretty big. You'd be happy with that, wouldn't you? You know, on your weekend sesh? Yeah, yeah, I'll have that. But then the response from Lorenzo is just gigantic, and you're pretty sure he's going to hurtle to his death. Like, you're watching that, and you're like, oh, no, Lorenzo, no, you've got such a long life ahead of you. And then, boom, he comes down so soft. Look at that. Look at that. Anyway, I'm going to show you how he does it. Right, we're back to using this clip again, sorry. But look, you can see it really clearly here. That heli loop, look how far forward he sends that. That takes a bit of courage. You send the kite forward again whilst you're already going pretty fast. You're going to go really fast. But he does that because then it's like a pendulum effect. He can then send it backwards even harder. The further back it goes and the faster it gets there, the more the kite's acting as a brake, bringing you down softly. Look how far it is behind him there. It's like he's forgotten it. He's like, oh shit, yeah, better bring that puppy back forward. Oh, I'm glad I remembered. Him again, he's nearly into the 30s without an impression score. That's almost impossible, isn't it? This will be a first. I think we are heading towards probably one of, probably the highest score we've ever seen at the King of the Air. Now, Let's be honest, what you're really here for is to see who had the worst crash of the day. And it was either that one from Joshua Emanuel. The kite did catch him, so, you know, we'll, we'll take some points off that. Or it was this one 
from Jason van der Spy. However, there is someone else on the King of the Air Day that had a crash that was less wet, but quite a lot more critical. And our second female to ever enter into the King of the Air, Beto Gomez from Colombia. Have we ever had someone from Colombia compete in King of the Air, Lewis? Uh, I don't think we have had somebody from Colombia, no. Check it out. Well, well, if you viewers, hashtag for us, Red Bull King of the Air, if this is our first person from Colombia. Yeah, I think the tweets you can expect from that, Colin, might be, might be a bit different. Oh, look how sick Beto is, though. That's how he starts the heat. That's how we get it. When you have to talk about Jamie Overbeek's first heat, imagine getting into your first King of the Air ever, only qualifying, there he is to the right-hand side, only qualifying on the day with a Porsche Golden Ticket, then going into the heat, the first heat of the day is the Big Air World Champion and the King of the Air Champion, and you win it and go into heat number, around number three and go all the way to the final. That's pretty, like, epic. These are Lorenzo's three scoring moves. It was pretty dominant. Still find it. Wow, what was that? Was that three back rolls with the board off with a mega loop? Hits the kicker nicely. Inverted, doobie loop, board off. Contra, there we go, actually, instead. Contra loop, board off with a nice two, three rotations. Ram picking up at the back. It's a bit of bump in front of him. It's going to be difficult to negotiate it. Good timing, good takeoff. Wow. Double Contra. Slow rotation on the way down. Double Brilliant kite stuff. Loop, double kite loop board off there. We know that score's big in this competition. Meanwhile, Andrea is, well, he's basically having a shit show initially. There's Andrea. Like a contra loop with a, a boogie loop as well. Can he stick it? Not no, landing not it. in the zone here, is Andrea. What you need to consider here is that he's doing this with a broken rib and he crashes his first four moves. He must have been in a huge amount of pain, but that didn't stop him from doing this double and this S loop. Andrea Principi was the favorite for this King of the Air, but it wasn't his day and he got the strategy wrong all day. He had a completely different approach to everyone else. He was starting on a six meter and then changing up to an eight once he'd got a few doubles in. Earlier on in the day though, doubles weren't scoring that well. It wasn't windy enough when he was doing this. And then in the final, when this strategy actually would have worked, he reversed it and started on the eight and then changed to the six and then eventually the five. Meanwhile, Lorenzo was continuing to go bigger than anyone else had that day. And Jamie was managing to land stuff on his small kite that he'd never even attempted before, cementing him in second place and Lorenzo on the top spot. Ty looking at, oh, this is big. Can he land Double it on the, on the buzzer? On the buzzer. Wow. Thank you to me and a bloke named Loik, as always. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. They absolutely push it to the next level. These guys.